hören jetzt die letzte Rede für den Auftakt und zwar aus den USA Genesis von der Organisation Let's Talk About. Hi everyone, um, I'm gonna read a short note from a dear friend and co-organizer, Eliza, that um, couldn't make it and then I'll read my speech. Hi everyone, I am so sorry I can't make it today to share my support for this event. My name, is, my name is Eliza Levison, and I'm a queer woman from the US living in Berlin for the past few years. I am so proud to be represented today on behalf of Let's Talk About by my dear friend and co-organizer, Genesis, and to be standing in solidarity with activists for reproductive choice from around the world. We, from Let's Talk About, believe that everyone deserves access to non-biased, comprehensive, reproductive care from the right to choose to terminate a pregnancy to financial, medical, and emotional support needed to bring healthy children into the world and to care for them as they grow into people and members of our global community. As any of you, as any of you who are citizens of faraway countries now living in another nation could understand, it's often overwhelming to see the events of US politics and know that there is little we can do from such a great distance. Being able to grow in a vibrant global network of activists united in the same cause is an amazing opportunity for both of us to educate ourselves and what other circumstances around the world might be. I want to thank you so much for including us in this speech today, and together we will make a difference. Hi everyone, my name is Genesis, and I believe that the United States of America continues to let women and children down. Even though in 1973, the US Supreme Court decided in Roe v. Wade that the US Constitution protects a woman's decision to terminate her pregnancy as a fundamental right. It was also decided in court that the state may not interfere with that fundamental right with regulations that prohibit or greatly limit access to abortion. Basically, state officials needed to mind their business and respect the Supreme Court ruling and let women have autonomy over their own body. Ever since that ruling, governmental actions at national, state, and local levels have been designed to abolish the rulings or limit their effect. Why though? Why care so much about what a woman does to her body? Why care so much if she has the baby or not? I'll tell you. Restricting and criminalizing abortion keeps women, especially women of color, bound and vulnerable. It also lends a hand at giving women an inferiority complex served on a silver platter by the egotistical and self-righteous views of white men in power. Where did I leave off? <laughs> yeah, okay. It's like women take a giant leap forward and then those people in power are like, nope, and drag us two steps back. They want to criminalize abortion even though they don't criminalize men for leaving women after impregnating them. In some cases, they barely criminalize rapists for raping, but instead they blame the victim. The state of Alabama even wants to restrict abortion even if caused by rape or incest. Did you hear me? Alabama wants to pass the most restrictive and aggressive anti-abortion anti law in recent American history. If passed, right, that sucks. If passed, it will prohibit a woman from having an abortion even if she becomes pregnant after being raped or impregnated, usually raped by a family member. <sighs> Fuck me if I know why female Governor Kai Ivey signed that legislation bill. In America, we have such a boys will be boys culture which normalizes rape and sexualizes a body's woman, a, bo a woman's body. If we keep this up, we will never have reproductive justice. Men in power continue to feel threatened by strong, educated, and empowered women, so they use politics, propaganda, and especially religion to sway the masses against women's autonomy and healthcare decision making. The United States claim to be the land of the free, but without autonomy of our body, women are not free. Let me repeat that louder. Without autonomy of our own body, women are not free. But of course the government knows that. 
I'm also sure we can all agree that religion is used to often limit the freedom and ability of women, public and privately. Religion usually doesn't benefit us since religion is an ideal, no person is held accountable. The idea that women are less is ingrained and it becomes subconsciously or consciously hardwired into the masses. There is a clear agenda to subjugate women and strip us of our power. Thus, those in power use religion and faith to navigate their agenda against women and reproductive justice. There is a lack of education on this topic, especially on reproductive justice and what it really means. Mostly those in rural areas in the United States where conservative values are heavily implemented, there is a lack of liberal conversation. There is a lack of education when it comes to proper and effective sexual education. Students are rarely taught consent. Um, are there any Americans in the office, in the audience? Well, we weren't taught consent. I don't know if you guys are taught consent in Europe, but as you can see, that, that there's a problem there. There's also a taboo around having pleasure during sex, and most times than not, we're taught through porn and social media. Again, I hope you see a problem in that. There is a considerable fear and uncertainty as women regarding our future access to contraceptives and abortions. As the future of the US, as the future of US healthcare policy is debated, many women, including myself, are concerned about the impact of policy changes on our ability to access affordable contraception and abortion abortion, which I, along with Benny, view as essential to the preservation of bodily and reproductive autonomy. The restriction to access affordable contraception and abortion should be viewed as unconstitutional, but as if they care about the Constitution unless it's about their precious guns. Anyway, the Constitution is hardly democratic. It turns my stomach that Trump has elected two pro-life justices, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, onto the Supreme Court, a very much conscious and deliberate decision which may detrimentally tip the scale resulting in overturning Roe vs. Wade, a pressing reality which will affect the lives of millions. If overturned, each state would be able to decide whether their residents are legally allowed to have abortions. 18 states have already vowed to make abortion illegal if the law is overturned. This means women who live in a state where abortion is illegal must endure a back alley abortion, risk serious infection, or jail time. This also means that a woman will have to travel hundreds of miles to the nearest abortion clinic depending on her state of residence and that's only if her state does not criminalize traveling states for abortion but don't worry the rich will always find a way to pay for safe abortion regardless of the law so what are our takeaways there's a serious lack of education in the United States despite the amount of money we pay in taxes and in private education religion is used to sway the masses propaganda is a thing do your research please do your research men in power will never relinquish control to women and they will always play dirty there are hidden agendas against women and importantly what is reproductive justice reproductive justice is the human right to maintain personal bodily autonomy have children not have children and parent these children in a safe and sustainable community this includes not being discriminated against not not raising our children in polluted environments, not being scared that the police will shoot and kill our children, access to quality nutrition and maternity care, empowering women through education, ending sexual violence and victim blaming, security, clean water, and the list goes on. everything in eight minutes but I would like to everyone to go home and look up reproductive justice and really try to understand what that means and really understand that most pip most women don't have the liberty of such justice thank you everyone Info, die Kinderecke ist vorne, nicht hinten, wurde mir gerade gesagt. Und ich versuche es jetzt noch mal kurz zusammenzufassen, weil wir ja auch gleich los wollen. Äh, Genesis hat sich gefragt, wie kommt es eigentlich, dass ausgerechnet diese Männer jetzt anfangen, sich über Frauenkörper herzumachen? Naja, es ist nichts Neues, sagt sie, denn immerhin geht es darum, Frauen einzuschränken, sie auszuliefern mehr oder weniger in Minderwertigkeitskomplexe zu verpassen, denn es geht darum, Macht über sie zu behalten. 
Das geht so weit, dass sie in den USA im Moment sogar dabei sind, in einigen Staaten die Situation drastisch zu verschlechtern, beziehungsweise in einigen Staaten haben sie das bereits. In Alabama geht es so weit, dass sie sogar äh, Schwangerschaftsabbrüche nach Vergewaltigung oder Inzest, was meistens ja auch Vergewaltigung ist, äh, komplett verbieten wollen. Sie sagt, das geht in den USA unter anderem deswegen, weil die Kultur, Boys will be Boys, also Jungs sind halt so, ähm, Vergewaltigung und Sexualisierung von Frauenkörpern normalisiert haben. Aber sie sagt, ohne die Autonomie über unsere Körper sind wir nicht frei und deswegen geht es darum, dafür zu kämpfen und uns zu informieren. Sie hat hinterher noch zusammengefasst, nachdem sie sehr viel von dem, was Trump gerade alles schlechtes anfängt und ich glaube, ihr habt das alle auch mitbekommen, äh, was ihr wichtig ist, dass wir es verstehen. Das eine ist, es gibt ein ernstzunehmendes Problem mit der Bildung oder der Information in den USA, genau dann, wenn es um Schwangerschaftsabbrüche oder sexuelle Selbstbestimmung geht. Religion spielt in diesen Kämpfen, wenn es um Macht geht, eine große Rolle. Propaganda ist am Wirken und wir müssen aufpassen, dass wir nicht der Propaganda, ähm, nee, dass wir denen nicht glauben, wir sollen uns informieren. Männer in, an der Macht werden niemals die Kontrolle über Frauenkörper hergeben und sie werden von nichts zurückschrecken, um diese zu behalten. Und es gibt definitiv eine versteckte Agenda gegen uns Frauen. Sie möchte, dass wir uns mit reproduktiver Gerechtigkeit auseinandersetzen und was das bedeutet. Und es ist eben nicht nur die Autonomie über den eigenen Körper, das Recht, Kinder zu bekommen oder eben auch keine zu bekommen ist, sondern eben auch das Recht auf eine Welt, in der man diese Kinder eben großziehen kann. Es geht äh, da, darum, äh, nicht von Rassismus betroffen zu sein oder äh, ja, eben eingeschränkt zu werden. Und es geht auch darum, dass wir nicht beim sogenannten Victim Blaming, also im Endeffekt den Frauen oder denen, die ohnehin schon so Opfer geworden sind, noch die Schuld dafür zu geben, sondern uns für sie einzusetzen. Wir sollen verstehen, dass es eben immer so sein wird, dass privilegierte Frauen sich vielleicht Rechte nehmen können, die andere eben nicht können und dass wir dafür kämpfen müssen, dass alle, eben auch die nicht so privilegierten Frauen, diese Rechte haben. Punkte von dir zusammengefasst.